and better and better and better. All right, ladies and gentlemen, 345. We got our weekly uh, uh, Q&A, live Q&A. Uh, we have a, an, a former Impact Wrestling star on the show tonight. Uh, without further ado, let's get right into it. He is Garrett Bischoff. How are you tonight, sir? doing great for the second time you've been on the show and uh it's great to have you uh, on the show tonight and uh it's great to uh, uh talk once again uh but this time um uh, this time it wasn't it was it's live this time last last time it was uh it wasn't the q a format it was just you and i chatting uh but now uh, we're going to interact with uh, our fan base and uh they've got some things to talk to you about Yes, I will definitely make sure about that. Let's see. Um thought I had thought I had this together. How's it sound now? Getting a little better. Okay, getting a little better. Is this better? Now we can now we can do this. All right. <laughs> all right, all right. Awesome, man! It's great to uh, and and the sound sound good sounds good. Everything you sound, I uh, sound consistent. We're all good, all good. Awesome! All right, cool. Yeah, it's funny. Six over six and a half years into this show, sometimes you still get glitches. But uh, <laughs> I'm glad we're all set. Joseph said uh, that he was just listening. What's that? Yes, <laughs> very true. Very true indeed. Uh, Joseph said that he was just listening to 83 weeks earlier and his your pops was just talking about you. So that's uh, uh -oh. <laughs> yeah. All right. So uh, we're going to hashtag ask Garrett A S K G A R, just one R G A. R E T T. So uh, ask Garrett. Hashtag ask A S K G A R E T T. So uh, before I get into any of these questions, let's catch up. Um, so you're doing um, what? What are you doing these days? Uh, <laughs> and and I know that you are doing some indie stuff with West Briscoe still, right? Fulton, uh, right? You're going to get Sawyer Fulton and um, his partner. Say that again. You're going against Sawyer Fulton and his partner, right? Correct. Um, what's his partner's name? Starts with a V, I believe. <laughs> yeah, uh, no problem. Uh, I'll I'll get that for you, but uh, we'll we'll be sort of we'll be sort of plug that uh, before the Q and A is up. So definitely want to plug your stuff um, and see. Um, so definitely want to do that. All right. So uh, so let me, like I said, let's just catch up before we uh, have any questions. Uh, before I get to any of these questions, um, 
so we, we we talked about your your impact wrestling run um before when, when you were uh talk and so uh just just as an overall you know uh evaluation of your uh, of your impact wrestling run what, what would you say what, what would you give just uh i guess i guess let's let's grade it what grade would you give your overall um uh impact wrestling run Yeah, what grade would you give yourself? Oh, man. You, your overall run. A, a, a C. A C, okay. <laughs> Why a C? Well, you know, I was still very green at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, and just due to timing, um, you know, I, I was given the opportunity, uh, which I'm very grateful for, to be thrusted into the, into the, you know, into the spotlight, so to speak. Um, but I was still very green. Yeah. I was, I was, I was, I was very, very green. So, um, you're looking back, you know, hindsight's always 2020. is looking back at it. I watched some of my old stuff. And like, man, that was stupid. What the heck are you doing, Garrett? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, why, why, why would you even act like that? Why would you do that? Why would you, why would you do that at that time? Yeah. Now, that that's very interesting. First of all, you know, I appreciate your transparency because a lot of people won't say that. <laughs> they, they'll be like, oh, yeah, everything was fine. You know, it was everything was good. I feel good. And, never, you know, I'll, I'll give myself an A. Um, but it, I think there's growth in that. Um, uh, to, to, to say that, to say that uh, there was some room of, for, for improvement. Uh, you know, you were thrust in a, a pretty, you know, pretty big uh, opportunity. Of course, you know, you started with uh, as a ref and you did some 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 time as a ref. Now, was that your father's idea to to, to make you a referee before giving you a wrestling role? Um, yeah. 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 And I was all about it, to be honest with you. Yeah. Very unique way to kind of, you know, get in there and um, the approach that we took. It, in some, in, in very few people's eyes, was a, they felt like we were hiding things. But at the end of the day, after a month or two, when it actually, you know, I mean, you know, when I say we we're hiding things, like for a good six, eight weeks, not even a locker room knew who I was. Oh, okay. Like I accepted from everybody, like in catering. My dad and I didn't speak. Oh wow! The new referee, who I was, you know, and we 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 literally played that to everybody. There might have been, you know, six or eight people total that knew what was going on, and we did it for a couple reasons. One, because we wanted to keep the story alive and surprising, and two, I wanted to I wanted the opportunity to be able to meet. These guys, you know, get myself in the locker room yeah. under a, yeah. without a freaking fucking this house kid, mm-hmm. you know. And um, at the end of the day, it worked. At the end of the day, it worked. I'm I'm glad we did it that way. And yeah. Being able to free with uh, with Earl and Brian Ebner, they took me under the ring and they taught me so much. And being able to have the opportunity to be in the ring for almost a year, mm-hmm. not a little bit more, in a referee setting. And be able to watch and see the mechanics of what goes on. That was that's a learning experience that a lot of guys don't get. To get. That's true. That's true. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. You know, a referee is just as important in the matches as the workers are. Hundred uh, percent. Being able to see it from that point, of, you know, that point of view was it was a great learning experience. And Earl Hebner is the man. He's a legend. Brian Hebner is great, and they, I have nothing but good things to say about those guys. It's funny that you bring up Hebner. Um, you know, you, we most recently, as far as a popular stage is concerned, we most recently saw him at All In. Um, did you watch All In? And and if you did, what was your what was your take on it? I did not, honestly. Um, and I know it sounds bad, but I really don't watch it anymore. Really? Um, no, you know, if I know a couple of my guys are, you know, my buddies that I'm close friends with are. Are 
or doing something big or you know WrestleMania or you know a couple of the big pay per views here and there. I'll I'll do. But as far as tuning in every week, um, I just don't really anymore. Mm-hmm. Uh, I record it. You know, I go back and scroll through it. You know, guys, uh, guys like Gallows and you know those, those guys that I like that I that I work with and they're friends of mine. I, I enjoy watching AJ and Small and Bobby. And, all those guys that are over at WWE now, I, I enjoy watching their success. Yeah. Um, but I did two hours of wrestling anymore, and I sure as heck did yeah. hours of TNA. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it, it's pretty pretty interesting how WWE is really putting a lot of hours of wrestling in. I mean, just I mean, if you think about it, just the past couple of months, you've had. Uh, I think like uh, you know since I think No Mercy, uh, Hell in a Cell, um, or or Hell in I think well you had Hell in a Cell, and then you had right after that you had like a uh, um, uh, Evolution, and then um, Crown Jewel. Well, actually, before Evolution was the Super Showdown. So you had Hell in a Cell, Super Showdown, Evolution crown jewel and then uh in a week and a half and a little over a week and a half you have um uh you have uh, survivor series so uh shelling out a lot of content and um you know it's one of those things that even even people who've been wrestling fans for their whole life you know still <laughs> you know still don't can't find the time all the time to to, to watch wrestling no, thankfully, I, I uh, it's it's one of the ways that I make a living, so uh, <laughs> it it actually works for, works in my favor. Um, but uh, you know, you watching wrestling, you don't make a living watching wrestling. You make a living by actually wrestling, <laughs> so that's a big difference. So, <laughs> um, Yeah. When I was younger, I probably would have sat down and watched eight hours of it. Yeah. 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 Um, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. <laughs> right. Um, Vertigo. Vertigo is the is the person's name that uh, is going to be a part of uh, that show on December 6th. Atomic uh, Tag Team Championship match uh, uh, at the. Space could uh, Space Coast Convention Center, uh, and um, I think that's Cocoa Beach, right? Cocoa Beach, yep. yep, yep. All right, all right, so let's get into these questions here. Uh, there you go, <laughs> there you go. So, uh, yeah, it's it's good, it's it's good, it's good that uh, you know, the fans know, you know, I have a lot of. Uh, listeners who uh, live in Florida, so uh, for those who live in the Cocoa Beach area, um, go take a drive uh, and, and check out Garrett's uh, Twitter page, and uh, has all it has the address on there as well. So go check him out. Him and uh, Wes, the Aces and Eights uh, reunion, ladies and gentlemen. So, uh, all right, so let's get into some of these questions. Uh, we got GHP asking, uh, what are some mistakes that your father has made? That you've learned from as you push toward your goal in this business. By the way, Eric Bischoff is the goat. Is what this uh, the, the total question and statement says. Oh man, that's a that's, you know that's that's a heck of a question, especially right out of the gate. Yeah, preloaded. <laughs> to be honest with you, that's that's a hard one for me to answer, only mm. because. You know, most people look at my dad and they remember him from WCW. And whether it's what they think they know or what they actually know, I'm not putting anybody down here. I'm just trying to paint a picture. Um, or what they've read or what they've got from him himself yeah. or any picture above. I was so young then, I didn't know any better. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I, you know, I, I was around it, but I was so young, I don't, I don't you know, I, I couldn't tell you what. A mistake that he made. I'm, you know, God knows there's probably a hundred of them. Mm-hmm. The same thing. Yeah. Um, but 
that just it's it's kind of hard for me to answer that because I was too young to really be there to give a adult perspective or a professional opinion on it because I wasn't I was a child and I didn't know, I didn't know any different. Yeah. So I apologize. I can't answer that one better, but I just don't really have I don't have a better one than that. Sure, sure. Yeah, it's uh. Well, what about uh, what about Impact Wrestling? Um, you worked with them in Impact. What uh, what are some things that uh, probably wasn't the best uh, business decisions that you thought you know that you that you learned from uh, as a as a pro wrestler? Uh, well, um, I think that you know, two totally different things. Yeah. Um, everybody, I, I get that question a lot, and usually it pertains to what they did with me. So if that's if that's what we're asking here, is, you know, is there, was there a mistake made with how we handled what he and I did together at TNA mm-hmm. as far as our story went? Once again, hindsight being twenty twenty, absolutely. I think, you know, things were rushed. I was greener than, you know, Goose stuff, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and uh, you know, it, it, I did the best that I could do uh, with what we had, and I thoroughly enjoyed every minute of it. Um, but once again, hindsight being twenty twenty, that it was probably way too rushed. Mm. Yeah. Uh, yep. I, you know, they, yeah, it's definitely something that you learn from, um, and and now since you've got the, uh, you've got the you've you've got the hours and you know you got the years uh, in the business to learn from those. You know, it is like you said, hindsight twenty twenty. The good thing of that is that that was a while ago, and you can learn from that. You were giving a big opportunity in a big stage early in your career to really uh, to learn from the good and the bad uh and and plus you've had you know time as a referee to really know that element too so uh you were given (laughs) you were given a lot of responsibility early in your career and um you know you're still wrestling so obviously you rebounded from it and uh learned from it another question here says i'm quite sure your father is one but who are some people that you look or looked up to in the business I'll name a few. So, the, so when, when I really started getting into it, let's we'll start from the very beginning. Um, the very first wrestling school that took me in, and once again, remember, I'm I'm not trying to sound arrogant here, but I'm I'm Eric Bischoff's kid, so I'm trying to be real careful about who who we get in with, so it doesn't. Some people will try to, you know, manipulate that or use that to their advantage. Yeah. Um, but the first place that I actually that we went to, my and my dad, he and I flew out to LA, and it was uh, Knox Pro Academy. It, it was Rikishi. Okay, yeah. The black in LA, and David Heath, Gangrel. That's the, 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 it was their academy, and they took me under their wing and treated me like family right from the start. Nice. And I'll never forget it. You know, those those guys, they're they're some of the greatest guys you can ever meet. And uh, I always to this day, I mean to this day, just nothing but respect and really look up to those guys. And they've they've been there. They've been to the big show. They've done it. They've been around for a long time. Yeah. They're established. um, And now they're trying to pass that kind of quality on to their students. Yep. uh, So that's one of those, a couple guys right there. Um, Cut to TNA, uh, Kurt Angle. Kurt Angle took me under his wing. Nice. If you remember the early days, when I went from, when as soon as I went from referee to wrestler, um, they kind of put me in a little, in, in something with Kurt Angle. And he took me under his wing and coached me and helped me and was nothing but amazing. And I'll never forget it. So he, to this day, he's one of the, he's one of the guys that really 
you know, really stood out to me and, and I looked up to. That's awesome. Uh, That's an easy choice. <laughs> uh, Bubba Ray, Bully Ray. Yeah. Uh, those guys. So, I mean, just the most fantastic. They, they have such heart and passion to business and they, they love to teach. Mm-hmm. Uh, they, they, they all have their own styles. Devon is much more, he's a lot easier to, to warm up to. Bully is not, but when you know that you're, you know, when you're, when you're working with him, when you're listening to him, if he's, if he's drilling on you, it's because he cares. Mm-hmm. That, that kind of thing really stuck with me. So, and, and I can go on about it much more, guys, too. There's, there's more than, there's more than just that, but yeah, you know, those, those guys, you know, they, they really, they really, they didn't have to. Yeah, those are some those are some very legendary choices for sure. I mean, <laughs> anybody that grabbed those uh, group of people and and become a star for sure. Uh, all right, so let's see here. We got to Wild Boy asking, "How much time have you spent?" Uh, and it says, "Quote." It says, "Quote uh, the great place of Detroit, Michigan." But I'm an Ohioan, so uh, I won't call it great. I've been in Detroit. I, I like Detroit uh, from when I've been there, but uh, I don't know if I call it great. <laughs> how, many, how much time have I spent in Detroit? Not much. Uh, I was there when I was younger for my grandfather's funeral for about three days. I don't remember much of it. And then I was back there last April for Legends of Wrestling. That's uh, Brian Knobs' um, business Okay. wrestling whatever you want to call it mm-hmm. um it was uh it was that was a great show though we had three thousand people in the, in, the, nice. in the arena yeah sting was there rick flair was there my dad was there uh me briscoe mike knox you know so we had uh, three three of the pieces and these guys were there um uh, there's a bunch of guys hey, keep, keep going it was but it was a great show mm-hmm. really good actually i had to work at that after we done that night um, so we had a we had a lot of fun, um, great show. That was the last time I was in Detroit. That was April one of you. Last yeah, it was on my birthday. Nice. Um, that sounds fun. My dad, my dad grew up in Detroit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it was kind of uh, after the we stayed an extra day or two, and he and I went over to his little neighborhood and walked around the block where he used to live and grew up. And oh, nice. His old school. Yeah, when they at one of the neighborhood restaurants that his parents, my grandparents, his parents used to take him to on Friday nights for pizza. And, so it was, it was fun. It was a good, it was a good time. The taste of nostalgia. It's always, uh, it's always good to go back and uh, you know, you know, trip down memory lane. As long as the specifically if the memories are good, so <laughs> it's, it's good that uh, you were able to do that with your dad. That's awesome. Um, speaking of that. Yeah, well, speaking of that, what's uh, we got a question here regarding Aces and Eights. Uh, how was your, I mean, what was your overall thoughts uh, with the Aces and Eights uh, faction? Now, I've had you on before, and we talked about this. I've had Wes Briscoe on before to talk about it. I've had um, uh, Ken Anderson on to talk about it. I've had Mike Knox on to talk about it. So I've had a lot of people, uh, D-Lo, I've had him on to talk about it. So I've had a lot of people on my show and I've, I've had your dad on my show twice. Uh, so I, I, I've had a lot of interesting takes on aces and eights. Um, so, I mean, what, what are your overall thoughts on aces and eights just for uh, the new batch of listeners that uh, probably wasn't uh, around to hear you when you were on my show before? had not seen a raw, gritty action like that since DX and NWO. Mm-hmm. There have been, there've been a couple groups, but nothing nothing quite gritty and raw and edgy um, since the DX and NWO thing. And it, when it, it, it got such a great reaction, um, and we were having so much fun with it. 
it, I think, in my opinion, it, whether I was a part of whether I was a part of it or not, it was obviously fantastic. Mm-hmm. Um, my part that was slim to none, but it, the just the the edginess of it, the way it was produced, the way it was created, the you know we pushed the boundaries without crossing them, uh, and that's something that the wrestling world just hasn't seen in a long time. Yeah. You know, it, it, everybody will have their, their own opinion about it, but nobody either. The Shield didn't exist until the Aces and Ace were, were created. Did they do it bigger and better? Absolutely. Did they have better, you know, did they have better production over it? Uh, of course. Yeah. But, but, again, they forced the envelope. They forced somebody else to do something to, you know what I mean? It's It, it was just such a, and it was fun. Mm-hmm. It was just new, different, um, Something that people—it wasn't the same old mundane stuff. Yeah. So it was—it was a lot of fun. I had so much fun being a part of it. I had so much fun doing it. Um, it unfortunately ended very abruptly. Yes. For a of political reasons that I won't go into. Um, but anybody who anybody who's been a part of it knows what I'm talking about. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Um, they ruined a really good thing. I think there was, there was, there was something that was, they, they could have let that one go for another six months. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I agree. It's, it's, it's unfortunate that such a great thing ended the way it did. Yep. But I had a ball of it. I thought it was the greatest, you know, one of the greatest things that, that not the greatest thing ever to go down in history. Trust me, I'm not saying that, but just in this, this day and age, you don't see that kind of stuff. Yeah. A couple more questions. Before we ask this uh, last couple questions here, I think I've asked probably just about everybody who are part was a part of the aces and eights this question i don't recall um the answer now i'm gonna ask you this um was bully the i mean was he the 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 mastermind like was he booked to be a part of the, the 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 kind of head honcho mastermind the whole time or was it kind of uh changed in the middle was it a last minute decision who was supposed to be the leader from the very beginning um so to my understanding now listen i was i was talent i wasn't booking yeah so i don't know i know i was i was not a part of the uh, creative i was not a, a booker um so i don't i i couldn't give you an honest answer on that to my knowledge um they knew that they could run with the story they had for so long mm-hmm. without actually, because we were all wearing masks. So they could play that that gimmick for, you know, months and months and months and yeah. not reveal um, who was, you know, who was going to be. So I don't, in my honest opinion, I don't think they, they knew. Mm-hmm. They were kind of waiting to see how it played out mm-hmm. um, and how someone was going to react to that situation and that group and that faction. And then, according to the audience, pick who they think would be best. Okay. That's my opinion. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But I wasn't there. I'm not a booker. I'm not a, I'm not a creative writer. So I don't know if that was their intention, but that's how I took it. I can see that. I can definitely see that. Um, all right. So let's see. Let's ask... Uh, Let's ask this one from Zed. Uh, what is the most vicious fan reaction you ever witnessed? Hmm. Oh, I, there's two that stand out. Uh, and these, you know, mind you, these are two that stand out in person, like actually in an arena, not, not keyboard warriors or telephone tough guys. Mm-hmm. Those guys are adopted and they don't matter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but there was, the best match we got was over in Manchester. Um, and it was not just me. It was, I was a part of it. We were in the Ace and Mates. And the entire arena started throwing beer cans and stuff like they used to in the NWO days. Yeah. We were dodging different bottles of beer cans, you know, um, which we thought was awesome. We do that was the greatest thing. Like, all right, if we're getting you to do that, we job job accomplished. That's right. We win. Um, so that was that was one. Um, 
other than that, there were, I can remember once or twice where we were, we were leaving the building and there was a couple fans that were waiting out, you know, out behind the, where we were parked and started screaming and and hollering, but nothing ever came of it. So nothing, you know, not a big deal. Uh, most of the, most of the, the tough guys or the wannabe tough guys are people or warriors. And, yeah. Yeah. Those people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that's good though. I mean, you want people to be throwing beer cans and hooping and hollering at you. That's that's a job well done for a heel. You know, nowadays you have heels that people cheer for them, and that just kind of, that's to me as a traditionalist. I've been watching wrestling over thirty years. That's that's counterproductive to me for a heel. A heel shouldn't be cheered. I mean, getting beer cans thrown at them and and uh, people out in the back wanting to you know, uh, take them out. That, that's, that's a job well done for a heel. That's how I look at it. You know, like, listen, everybody's got a job. I'm a heel. My job is to make you hate me. That's right. Want to give me a big old hug and kiss at the end of it. Well, then I didn't do my job. Exactly. <laughs> Hoorah. I did a good job. Yep. You know what I mean? 100%. Absolutely. All right, last question of the night. Uh, can you name some of your favorite wrestling theme music? Now, that's uh, one of the personal favorite questions of the night for me because I love uh, theme music, specifically old school theme music. But what are some of your favorite theme songs in the professional wrestling? Stone Cold is definitely one of my favorites. Yeah, that's a classic. Those are the ones that I like because they today it's almost like you're in a club. Mm -hmm. you're in a nightclub. That's true. <laughs> a lot of EDM, yeah. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, you know, you can't, you know, I mean, you can't as soon as that as soon as it hits, you know what's happening. Mm -hmm. There's not a split second that you're thinking who is this. Yep. As soon as it hits, boom, you you know who it is. Stone cold. As soon as it hits That's true. So, uh, yep. So those, those are a couple of them. My, my brain isn't all, all what it used to be, and I'm sure if I heard a couple of them, but, you know. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. You, you know, you'll feel it. You'll feel it. It was edgy, yep. Yep. Absolutely. Good stuff. Um, all right. So as we uh, as we leave, I guess it's uh, we got another question here, and it's a good way to kind of send off here. What's your plans in the wrestling business in the near future? And uh, after you answer that question, uh, go ahead and uh, let the listeners know what you got going on. Uh, of course, it's December sixth, and where to find you on social media. camaraderie. I miss that lock, you know, I miss my buddies. Um, so having the opportunity to once a month or once every other month jump in the ring and uh, do something that I enjoy doing and love doing, um, but not relying on it for yeah. income yeah. is it, it makes it that much more fun to get. Oh. Um, you know, when you, when you look at, you know, but it becomes a job, it kind of takes the fun out of it. Um, I'm grateful and blessed to be able to, to still be able to do those things once in a while. Um, I'm definitely, I'm not, I'm not chasing another contract. That's not what I'm doing this for. Um, my days are not made. My days are over for that. Um, I'm just, I'm just here to have a good time and, and uh, do, do something I love with, with, with the guys I love to work with. Um, so as far as wrestling goes, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll continue to do those things. I love doing thing, wrestling shows for charity events, big brothers and big sisters. Oh, nice. You know, any, you know, 
you know, doing charity and stuff like that, I, I hand down, I'll, I'll be there, you know. Um, I love doing that kind of stuff. So, uh, you know, anytime you'll see me, you know, you'll see me at those, you'll see me at some of the atomic shows. Um, other than that, I got, you know, I got some new irons in the fire, uh, taking a, kind of a different approach to life at the moment. Like I said, in the beginning of this, uh, I took a hiatus, so to speak, from work and just kind of getting back to doing some old school stuff, um, contracting and painting and stuff like that, like old school construction stuff, stuff I did before I got to this. And mm-hmm. I'm kind of enjoying doing um, Yeah, I'm doing that for now. And uh, when, like I said, got a few irons in the fire, and when those, if, if they light up, you guys will be the first to know. Awesome. And you're at Garrett Bischoff on Twitter, right? One R. Yep. Awesome. Fantastic, Gary. Appreciate you taking the time to come on the show again. Hey, man. Thank you guys for having me. Really appreciate it. Have a good time. Uh, look forward to doing it again. Fantastic. Have a good night. Good night, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye. Nice guy. Nice guy here. Gary it is. Um, you know, it's, it's funny because um, both him and Eric are – very accessible people, you know, and I, and I appreciate that. I, it's, it's funny because both of them are just a phone call away. Um, and, uh, it was probably about a couple weeks ago. I, I called him. I was like, yeah, for some reason, I just want to gear Bischoff to be back on the show. Um, and because, you know, people like that who have had opportunities in, in, in impact or WWE, you know, um, but, doesn't really have much of a, a platform to share it. Uh, I like bringing those people on the show. And I, I, I thought about Garrett. I called him and, you know, we talked for a while and uh, he was more than willing to come on the show. And uh, so I, I appreciate that, you know, and I definitely give him major kudos and just for being a nice guy. Um, and so there you go. Um, let's see. All right, so we have um, so multi uh, the software. Um, yeah, get with me on that. Uh, I'll, I'll share that with you on on, on Twitter and uh, tweet Twitter Twitter, uh, and we'll we'll do that. Um, so yeah, I've I've been uh, talking to some people to. To, to get some some upgrades uh from from when i'm using um because I'm, I'm especially with the live q a doing this as many weeks as i can i have really really good actually pre-recorded stuff but uh the actually recorded live recording stuff um i uh you know i'm i'm a humble i'm a humble guy i'm i'm learnable i'm teachable uh and so i always uh <laughs> I, I'm a I'm a PhD student, so obviously I like to learn. Uh, so, um, yeah, I mean, any any software that uh, people who are IT savvy know about, let me know. Um, but until then, thank you for uh, being a part of the uh, Q and A, and thank you for enjoying. Thank you so much, Garrett, uh, for being a part of the uh, for the Q and A, uh, and it was fun. I appreciate. It. Like I said, stand up guy. Uh, and I appreciate Garrett to being able to uh, open his schedule up tonight. And uh, I remember we, we talked on the phone and he was talking about how uh, he usually has very uh, <laughs> uh, earlier bedtimes because uh, we're both Eastern time. And uh, uh, but, yeah, e- even with that, you know, he was able to stay up later and and be a part of the PNP nation. So thank you so much, Garrett, for being a part of the show. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we got a lot to talk about. We got a lot of fun to talk about, a lot, a lot of fun, uh, and it's going to be exciting. We got some crown jewel, ladies and gentlemen, uh, and we also have uh, some some interesting uh, interesting developments from crown jewel. Uh, so we'll, we'll see we'll see how that goes. So. Um, Sometimes my son is my bedtime. <laughs> yes, ladies and gentlemen. Um, 
you know, well, I, and the funny thing about that is I have um, I have three kids and 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 my uh, my youngest, uh, she, we we were. Her her bedtime was starting to get um her, her bedtime was starting to get like out of hand like my my two boys they're like you know we're like hey listen this is your bedtime you can hang out in your room for a little bit and watch some TV but this is when you're going to get into bed and so I have uh, my youngest is a daughter uh, as my as as a um, a daughter, my daughter, she's uh, she'll be one in three weeks, actually, and um, you know, you know how newborns are. You're up whenever, uh, but her, the good thing is, her schedule is starting to get really good. Um, so we're actually gotten to the point where, um, uh, we we we've actually gotten to the point where it was like nine o'clock, but she's starting to sleep very well. We I uh, had some consultation with uh, with the doctor, um, with the a pediatrician, and you know she was like, "Hey, you know what? Cry, it, let her cry it out for a couple of days." You know, she's kids are a lot smarter than you think they are, and they'll keep crying. You know, uh, thank you, Malty. Um, I appreciate that. I hope your daughter has a fantastic birthday. Um, and I'll address some of those Ask Chris questions as well, some really good ones. Uh, I'll go ahead and address those here in a bit. Um, but, yeah, so it, it – it, so we got to the point where, you know, she this was months ago because uh, we were trying to get to the point where we were sleeping through the night at least, like, five hours straight <laughs> um, because, you know, my, my poor wife, uh, you know, through, throughout the time that uh, she was, like, super duper nursing and cluster feeding and stuff like that. That was, that was brutal, uh, for my wife, uh, specifically for my wife. Um, so now thankfully, you know, it's, it's a lot better. She sleeps through the night and, um, you know, it got to the point where one of the biggest things that broke that was the fact that she was crying she because she's very smart. Babies are very smart, a lot smarter than you think. Uh, they'll, they'll keep crying because they know what they want. They, they absolutely are very aware of that. And so if you kind of break the mode a little bit, when they, when you transition them to like a crib, um, and if they, you know, kind of cry it out a little bit, they get to the point where that doesn't work anymore. And that's usually the barrier. That's usually kind of like the, the breaking the mold. And, and allow them to sleep all, uh, you know, throughout the night. So, um, some good advice. Uh, I read about that, and it was good to get that confirmed because a lot of people who are, are really sensitive about that. And um, you know, I read conflicting reports, but it was good to have a an expert, you know, talk about that. So, um, oh no, multi, you weren't you weren't rude whatsoever, man. I I, I appreciate uh, that very much. So. Um, parents rules, it says, yes, absolutely. Kids can wear us down. GHP says, absolutely. hundred percent. Uh, wild boys asking, uh, did you find out any backstage news at ROH regarding the elites future? Yes, I did. Uh, you want an exclusive here on the pancakes and power slams? Is anybody, anybody want an exclusive on the pancakes and power slam show? Are you ready? Um, so the exclusive uh, is I was there, as you know, I gave um, uh, live. Uh, oh, we got a no profanity zone in the chat room. <laughs> um, all right. So here we go. So uh, as you know, I was there. Um uh oh jose lothario passed away i didn't know that um and to be honest i didn't know he was still living actually so um yeah all right so here we go uh i was there um did some media work there and uh, as you saw on the crave wrestling pancakes and power slam show 
uh, live results with photos. And at the end, Marty Squirrel, 83. Wow. He was 83 years old. Um, Jose Lothario. Um, so at the end, Marty Squirrel, uh, <laughs> he says uh, he he love um, he he said uh, he loves um, being in Columbus is one of his favorite um, places to be, um, and um, he enjoys the crowd. So he got a big pop there. Um, and he was, you know, he, he got, he was, he was super over and he said, uh, <laughs> he, he was like, he, he revealed something to us that I'm like, okay, so of course, you know, I work, for, I work for the media. So of course I'm going to reveal it. So I was trying to figure out when I'm going to reveal it. And I was like, you know what? I think I'm going to reveal it as an exclusive on the pancakes and power Sam show. So Marty did reveal that uh, he said, uh, you know, people are wondering where me and the boys uh, are going to go. And he said, uh, you know, here's here's the news. I'm not going anywhere. So Marty, uh, Marty Squirrel, at least. And he did clunk the boys with him. So but specifically speaking, Marty Squirrel uh, revealed that uh, he will be staying with the Ring of Honor. So, and, uh, he won the survivor of the fittest and, uh, um, he, he stayed, he, 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 he won the survivor of the fittest. So that guarantees him that, uh, world title match. So it looks like we'll probably be having Jay lethal and Marty squirrel at final battle. Um, I, I think I'm a big Jay lethal fa fan. I think Jay lethal's the, the, uh, the num you know, he's, he's the, he's the greatest of, the current era right now, he's my personal favorite right now. He has been for a few years as far as my top five is concerned. I don't want him to lose, but you know, I can see, I can see Marty scroll beating, uh, be beating Jay Lee through a final battle, but, and I probably, and it makes sense because they, that, that probably may be kind of like one of those things, um, that while waits, Perhaps see, I don't know. I'm I'm close with some people in ROH that I don't want to. I, I definitely don't want to do a bunch of speculation that I don't necessarily know about because I respect, you know, the the relationships that I have with with people in Ring of Honor. Um. So, but it seems like it seems like Marty Squirrel, you know, by staying, um. That that that's potentially kind of a reward for him making the decision to stay. Now I don't know that for sure, of course, um, but it seems like that may be some type of a reward for that. So, yeah. So he, that that was the that was the that's the exclusive, ladies and gentlemen, here at the Pancakes and Power Slam show. Um, Marty Scroll says that he's staying with the ROH. Um. All right, more ask questions. Gruss is asking, do you think we could get Shane McMahon versus CM Punk at WrestleMania 35? <laughs> okay, so here's the unpopular opinion. <clears throat> and I'm and I hope that I've garnered a relationship with the PNP Nation strong enough to say this because this may hurt your feelings. Okay. And uh, you know. Um, we've, we've, we've developed quite the strong, uh, familial relationship with the PNP nation and myself, but I'm going to give you an unpopular opinion. Are you ready for this? No, I said, are you ready for this unpopular opinion here? And the unpopular opinion is this. Uh, I am not a CM Punk fan, and I've I've stressed this before on the show. Uh, within the past 345 episodes, I've I've made this clear. I made it clear on the three and a half years that I wrote for Bleach Report from 2012 to 2015 as a feature columnist. I've written uh, I've written articles about CM Punk. 
I am not a fan. Uh, now, granted, uh, he had a cult-like uh, impact in the WWE. Uh, I would love to interview him on the show. Um, you know, I would love to do a Q and A with CM Punk. I'm sure that you all would love to as well. Um, you know, from a from a business standpoint, I would absolutely love to interview him. Um, personally, I'm not a fan. Um, you know, yeah, I, I don't think the WWE's uh, lacking much, or if at all. I Shane McMahon versus CM Punk. Uh, I, yes, yeah, sure, sure. You know, I guess. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't. To me, on paper, right now, if that was a thing. It wouldn't really wow me, but I'm sure it wow a bunch of people because CM Punk is so popular within the kind of the hardcore fan base. Shane McMahon can go. I, I on the on the flip side of that, I'm a huge Shane McMahon fan. I have been for years. Um, so that would be an interesting match. I'm sure that the build for that would be intriguing. You know, it would be intriguing to an extent. Um. But, you know, on, on paper, that's just something that I wouldn't really be interested in, to be honest with you. Now, now, granted, now let's make this very clear. If CM Punk does come back, uh, if CM Punk does come back, if that's something that's, um, you know, would be fun um, uh, and exciting uh, to everybody, um, you know, that would be that would be fun, and that would be something that's um <laughs> that you would do, uh, as far as be enjoy the thrill of CM Punk and um get caught up in the moment of uh, of CM Punk, and I'm sure it'll be awesome to see live, um, but you know, um, <laughs> other than that, yeah, you know, there you go. Uh, you know, it's, it's CM Punk chants uh, actually get booed a lot now. So, but I suppose if if Shane McMahon was, uh, if we see a Shane McMahon and CM Punk match, uh, it would be interesting to to see. So, all right, here we go. Um, what else? Some good questions. Good Ask Chris questions here. Um, if they do leave, do I see them going to Impact or WWE? I definitely see them going to WWE like an NXT type thing, um, which I think would be a good idea. Um, let's see. Thanks for the info. Oh, absolutely. 100%. Exclusives, ladies and gentlemen. Brandy, Brandon says, neither am I. Yeah, okay. I'm <laughs> Um, Sufi's asking, who do you think would face the AOP? Um, now the raw tag division, um, is the weakest ever. Do you see someone random pairing together? So who would you like to see paired? Uh, it looks like, it looks like, um, Bobby Roode and, um, uh, Chad Gable. I mean, I like Bobby Roode. I like Chad Gable too um but they just don't have they just don't it, the, the division is 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 not good um i don't understand yeah i'm not a big fan of of the division um uh and i think i would hope that they would have more i hope that the, i hope that they would have teams that's more uh intimidating would be a stronger uh opponent to the ALP. Here's here's what I would prefer. Um and, and to be honest with you, I'm sorry, I like I like Leo Rush. <laughs> uh my man. I, I I I like Leo Rush. I like him as that manager role. 
but just Leo and Lashley is just boring. Uh, it's just the tandem makes sense. They try to get some heat in Manchester, and like, I mean, like Leo was struggling to get heat, and that's and that's sad. I mean, it's easy to boo somebody nowadays, but if you're struggling to get heat like that, yikes. Um, so maybe they need to make, make some changes. Maybe they need to, you know, realize, you know, maybe they need to do something like maybe Lashley realizes that he's not the, you know, a, a good acquisition. He's not helping him. He's holding him back, which to be honest with you, uh, it, it seems like Leo is getting more over than Bobby Lashley is. So, Maybe they can do something with that. And with that, maybe you can have Lashley and Apollo Crews team up together and become, you know, an intimidating babyface tag team. Um, so maybe that'll work. Otherwise, you know, who are we going to have the B team? Are they going to come back as babyfaces and feud against AOP? That would be something I totally wouldn't be interested in doing and, and watching or being interested in. Goodfellas saying, is our way to putting money back into the company besides resigning guys such as production values and online presence? Yeah, I think the thing with, with ROH is that uh, they, they, they do pretty good with house shows. They they with they have a uh, pretty good lineup with, you know, and that's, that's one of the things that uh, dates different uh, shows like uh, live events and merchandise. That's usually the bread and butter of non- you know, juggernaut, as Vince McMahon would say, um, non, you know, publicly traded companies and non, you know, corporate empire companies, usually, you know, having different dates and, and really pushing your merchandise is, is the way to go. So, and I think that their uh, partnership with um, New Japan has helped the company substantially as far as being popular their gates, you know, their, their live events is starting to, uh, increase, uh, significantly and they're just becoming quite popular. And I think of course, you know, the acquisition of like Cody Rhodes and, um, you know, when, you know, I think bully Ray's helping as far as bringing that WWE, especially being a part of the hall of fame as a contracted, you know, ROH guy, you know what I mean? So that's, you know, that was pretty, pretty cool. Um, they were, you know, being a part of the Hall of Fame while being an ROH guy. Um, so, yeah, I think they're making strides for sure. Um, Zed is saying uh, proli <laughs> it's all good. Chris hashtag prolific opinion. I like it. GSP is asking earlier. Someone mentioned Jeff Hardy versus Shane at TLC. I could definitely see a depth defying match between the two being that the rumor is Shane is going heel. See, here's the thing. I tweet and I tweeted this. I am not, I, I, I'm a big Shane McMahon fan. I am. Um, I don't have any, um, I don't have any desire to see Shane McMahon as a heel. First of all, keep him as the GM role because we need him I like him as a babyface character saying what getting that cheap pop saying what's up wherever you go. Here's what I don't want from Shane McMahon. <clears throat> I I don't want him as a heel to cloud the already very weak selection of uh talent they have as far as building them up. Um right now he you got some you already have some good heels. You have the Miz, you have uh, Samoa Joe, uh, you have some like, for instance, you have Andrade Cien Almas has been ridiculously underused. Um, you know, I, it was so, it's so funny. You have someone like an Eric Young, really anyone in, in, in sanity. Killian Dane can be pushed to be a strong heel, but they're not doing anything with him. Uh, it's funny because I was thinking about just how, and I think I mentioned this before, just how terrible they book nxt call-ups on smackdown alone you had um nikki cross uh is uh, accepting an open challenge losing and sanity 
makes an appearance for the first time in eons just to introduce Nikki Cross for her to lose. Um, and you had uh, Almas, which had a heck of a match against Mysterio, and I was expecting that. But why not? Be, that was a theme for me. That was a theme for Raw and SmackDown. Why in the world are you giving us this stuff just prematurely build? Who? When? When did professional wrestling stop concentrating on actually building stars? Actually putting time and effort to actually build people? It just makes no sense to me that you can't spend time that to to really build this out in weeks almost and mysterio would have been a fantastic pay-per-view match but why would you just give it unannounced no build no suspense no excitement you just give us mysterio and almost on smackdown live it just it was ridiculous same thing with angle and, and mcintyre now a big true mcintyre fan i think that i think Overall, it was great to really give McIntyre that kind of like that coming out party as far as being a top heel. I think it was great, but I think it would have had so much more emotion in it if it was actually built for Survivor Series, uh, for Royal Rumble, for, you know, take week, put, put weeks into that thing. You know, Angle could be, um, you know, uh, wanting to be a part of the Royal Rumble, or he could have been uh, wanting to be a part of WrestleMania. Uh, and in order to, you know, fight uh, at WrestleMania or at the Royal Rumble or be a part of the Rumble or be able to uh, be a part of, uh, uh, to in order to become GM again, you know, that's the, you could have, you could have done that. That could have be a Royal Rumble thing, you know, Baron Cor Angle keeps uh, bugging Baron Corbin. He wants to become GM again because Stephanie McMahon uh, is liking Corbin's uh, role as GM. Shane wants uh, Kurt, Kurt Angle wants it back. He 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 you know toys with uh, with Corbin throughout the weeks. Uh, he actually beats uh, Baron Corbin like on an episode of uh, Raw, um, and. You know, Corbin, the crowd goes wild. They think that's, you know, uh, they think that Angle's GM again. Corbin comes back and say, well, there was another part of this comeback tour. And that is Drew McIntyre. If you can beat Drew McIntyre, you'll be a part of, you know, you'll be GM again. So there's something at stake for for Kurt Angle other than just being a part you know being the Survivor Series captain put some weeks into this build this thing up um and that's at the pay-per-view is when you have Drew McIntyre you know kind of having this coming out party as far as being a top guy I mean seems like that would be a lot more interesting than just randomly booking it on a on a raw it just makes no sense to me um yeah no yeah I, I agree no more shane i mean you know i i like shane and i'll say i love shane <laughs> i'm a big i'm a big fan of shane mcmahon but um i don't i don't agree i don't i would not have shane mcmahon uh take someone else's heel spot away i i think that that's a i think that's a terrible call a terrible call um all right so let's jump into a few of the headlines we have a few headlines today because we got a really action-packed uh night as far as the best current wwe theme so i think we'll probably get past the first round today and then uh get because i you know i end up writing like 26 name uh, 26 themes down <laughs> uh because i kept getting messages of different things so i was like okay I, i'll i'll do it this way i'll show you the bracket here in a minute uh and we'll we'll do it this way we're gonna have some fun with it so without further ado ladies and gentlemen let's jump into these headlines here we go all right so um crown jewel 
Crown Jewel, Crown Jewel. Let's talk about Crown Jewel for a little bit. Um, odd show, a very, very odd show. Just you know, random thoughts on. I think the World Cup. I think the World Cup from the very beginning was very odd, <laughs> a very odd decision to have. And uh, first of all, nobody from the World Cup was born outside of the United States, if I'm not mistaken. So you had uh, Orton, United States, Ziggler, United States, Mysterio, United States. You know, he, you know, he reps Mexico for his heritage, but he was still born in the United States. Uh, Rollins, United States, Lashley, United States, Angle, United States. So everybody that was a part of the World Cup was born, was, you know, as a U.S. born citizen. So that alone doesn't make sense. And then you have Angle after building up this big thing. You have him lose in the first round against Dolph Ziggler. Why in the world would you, I, at the end of build up to the shame thing, which I think was bad, which was, I mean, first of all, you have two heels going into the finals of a World Cup. You know, people enjoy uh, two baby faces at times, but two heels going against each other at that big of a stage didn't make sense to me. I knew it was going to be something screwy. And when they did the Shane McMahon thing, I'm like, oh, like this is what this is the best you can come up with as far as booking a World Cup. Oh, just absolutely terrible. Uh, Lashley losing clean to Seth Rollins. I think that was a bad call. I, he should have lost by disqualification uh, or count out. I think that would have been better. It, to me, it's I just, I don't know. I, I just, it's really kind of hard for me to to really think about how WWE at times could just not book stuff that would make more sense. Like, for instance, if Bobby Lashley lost by countout and destroyed Seth Rollins after the match, that would be a perfect transition to Rollins losing the second round. He would have came out limp. That would have protected Rollins as the Intercontinental Champion. It would have protected Lashley because he would have lost by countout and destroyed Rollins at the end of the match. And that would have, like I said, protected Rollins to if he would have lost, which he did, it wouldn't have be it would have been, you know, some big match, some some really um tough match and there's no need for all that just protect you know if the ending was this whole shame thing which i would have rewritten anyways because i think that was a bad call but don't just have your top names just lose you know for no reason just to end it up with the shame thing bad bad call and uh so, I mean, I was disappointed. I was just, I was terribly disappointed. I actually enjoyed the greatest Royal Rumble show. I think that was, a, I think it was a good show. This was a huge disappointment. So, it's huge disappointment. Um, uh, the new, New Day and Bar was good. Totally. Um, what else, uh, what else was there as far as the card is concerned? Um, yeah, I, I think that, um, of course, you got the, 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 the main events was good. Um, no, as far as, as far as a, AJ and Joe was good, that, that, that <laughs> WWE championship match, that was actually really good. Um, the Strowman thing, you know, it's it's one of those it's one of those things that it's clear that I mean, and 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 you know, it was reported by the Observer um, that Roman Reigns was scheduled to 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 win the match. He was scheduled to keep the to keep the title, but um, because of the unfortunate uh, leukemia announcement. 
they they changed it and had Brock win. Now, here's the thing. I think I think Strowman should have won. I, I think Strowman should have won the match. But it makes more sense from a WWE standpoint. Honestly, it makes more sense of Brock Lesnar winning. Why? Because uh, of uh, of the whole the whole him and DC DC beat up Derek Lewis at UFC 230 a second round you know win uh, and there's you know they're looking for a March date March second um, that's only four months away so it makes sense you know that they from a WWE standpoint they actually give it actually gives them uh, more promo stuff, more market marketing. So it makes sense. Honestly, it makes sense. Um, but you know, here's the, here's the, the, the big issue that can come with this though. Makes sense that Brock Lesnar's champ going into his UFC, uh, potential fight against DC, which most likely to happen. And the problem is that March 2nd date is a month before WrestleMania. So if DC destroys Brock, which I think that he will, um, you know, you, you have a potential concussion on your hands. You have the ability, you know, four, four weeks to recover from whatever happens in that match. He could be, you know, repeatedly pounded. You know, he could, uh, he could be, he could get hurt. <laughs> he could get hurt. Um, so that, I mean, that's, that could be, have be a total adverse effect. And here's the other thing. Here's the other thing. If Lesnar gets destroyed by DC and he's in there carrying the WWE universal championship, that would make W see, I'm a UFC fan too. And there's not a lot of, people there's not a lot of ufc fans who are wwe fans just uh, from a grander scope a lot of ufc fans believe and the commentators as well believe that wwe is a joke so if dc destroys brock which which i think may happen he comes in there with that universal championship and that would just make wwe look like a joke that it, people are are, are uh, criticizing them for so i wouldn't personally i would uh i would kind of hype this thing up with with wwe versus ufc until rumble i would have brock lose it at the rumble um now who does he lose it to i don't see Strowman going into mania as champion here's what i would do um so so rock and reigns was my you know was my ideal um title match i mean going into wrestlemania 35 since um since reigns is out i would still utilize rock um probably rock beats lesnar at the rumble him going into mania's champion and then maybe you have uh the rock against uh you know somebody big the, o- the only problem is wwe doesn't have they don't have the star power anymore that's that's the crazy thing i can't think of one person other than roman reigns that the rock could go against right now and would have that big fight feel to it and that's that's the crazy part of it I can't think of anybody. Um, yikes. I, I really can't. I mean, you can, uh, I can see Rollins and Ambrose going against each other at Mania. Um, who do you have? Do you have, do you do Rock Taker for the title for the Universal Championship? And usually, you know, with the bigger names like the Goldbergs and the Rocks, you know, we saw the, those two have a short, uh, short run until Mania, and lose at Mania. Um. 
So Rock versus McIntyre. Yeah, I, I guess that wouldn't be too bad. That wouldn't. Uh, yeah, that wouldn't be too bad. Rock versus McIntyre. Yeah, yeah, that wouldn't be too bad. Uh, McIntyre wins the Royal Rumble. <clears throat> Rock beats Brock at Mania. I mean, excuse me. Rock beats Brock at Rumble. Um, and then you have Rock versus McIntyre at Mania. McIntyre and, and Rock puts McIntyre over. Yeah, I'd be fine with that. Um, I'd be fine with that. All right, so we got some good questions here. Um, oh yeah, real quick before we get into some more Axe Chris questions. Uh, I could have done I could have done without the tag match, DX and Brothers of Destruction. I could have, you know, at 53, you gotta give kudos to Shawn Michaels. Triple H tore his, you know, uh peck going in for surgery, most likely missing mania. That usually takes about six months to recover. That'll be at, you know, that'll be come May. So He's mostly likely going to miss WrestleMania unless he pulls a Cena and come back th in three months. <laughs> so, um, but you know, here's the thing: I, I'm I can do without Triple H being a part of Mania. To be honest with you, I, I enjoy his I enjoy his um, entrances every year. I, I get it. I understand that he, you know he'll be 50 years old next year. He's he's an office guy. That's his that's his time of year to bring back his boots. I totally understand it, and I'm a, and I'm cool with it too. I'm cool with Triple H coming back at WrestleMania. Um, but you know what else? What else do you have? Him and Batista. So so I like the tease that they were doing that with with that. I'm cool with that. I'm I'm cool with Batista and Triple H at Mania. Totally cool with it actually. But with it. <sighs> But it not happening is to me, it's like I'm not losing sleep over it not happening. Now, what I would be interested in seeing since Triple H would be out, I'd be fine with Batista and Orton. I think that that would be, you know, a good match. Yeah, they had it at 30 with uh, with with Daniel Bryan, and that was supposed to be the main event, Batista and Orton. Um, that would have been bad. <laughs> but uh but you know five years later um the scenario is much different it's not a matter of someone winning a royal rumble who everybody didn't want to win which was batista um and then going in and, and having a title match against randy orton singles match nobody wanted that so the the situation he says the baby face uh, you know, kind of like a, you know, another a big heel thing going on as far as attacking people. People don't attacking people that the fans like. So I mean, you know, the cards, the cards are on the table, and it can be a pretty good hand if if we do something with Batista and Orton. So uh, Lexi's asking. Oh, okay, here we go. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Uh, here we go. Uh, if you were Strowman's manager, uh, what advice would you give him to make him more marketable and thus viable in the eyes of VKM? So BBN, um, he could get a much, uh, deserved title run. Um, good question. Good question. Um, I think that, yeah, he's a strong baby face. Um, you know, he's that freakish, you know, kind of anomaly type of baby face. Um, but I don't, I don't know how much that's going to, help him just as far as marketability wise being a you know a huge baby face is you know wwe is all about are you going to be a are you uh worthy enough <laughs> to be uh in the uh good morning america's you know on the late night television shows 
that's what the WWE is all about. You know, at the end of the day, PR is a big deal too. Um, I don't know if Strowman is that guy as far as marketability wise. Now, this is what I would do. Um, I think that um, I think that they should really market Strowman to be to to really kind of strike while the iron's hot. Hot, and it's hard to say that because they didn't do that. They failed at that to strike while the iron's hot when it came to Strowman. But Strowman is such an anomaly that he can rebound very quickly with stuff like this. He shouldn't because they should have booked him correctly. But um, I think at the end of the day. Uh, you know, a, a feud with him and McIntyre after Mania. So, for instance, McIntyre wins the uh, the title at Mania. There you go. You have your feud right there with McIntyre and Strowman. Uh, you know, make it make it four months. You know, have his big big win be at uh, 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 SummerSlam next next. Uh, next august or if you want to do it before that that's fine too you know that'll work all right what else we got we got some good stuff drop the universal uh gabriel's asking at any time wwe wants they can drop the universal championship and reinstate the world heavyweight championship i agree man so we're gonna world heavyweight championship you see it's right there that's the the big gold belt ladies and gentlemen the big gold belt. Um, there's so many good questions up here. Um, okay, so uh, Hogan, Hogan appearing. Uh, you know, if I can be perfectly honest, man, I, I, <laughs> uh, kid, the kid in me came out, man. I felt uh, all kitty inside when Hogan, when the real american song came out it came on and uh you know hogan didn't really have a big part of the show he just he hosted which was translated into cutting a promo uh so you know it's uh really didn't have much bearings on the show at all so and it made sense that he came back at saudi arabia because uh from a marketing standpoint uh, I, I'm sure that Saudi Arabia isn't very familiar with the everything that's going on in the States as far as the controversy. So I think bringing him back at Saudi Arabia kind of made uh, people get the jitters again when it came to Hulk Hogan. And you have the Saudi Arabia crowd, which probably just, I mean, you know, based on them being, you know, a, a, a different nation you know just an international market they just won't they, they probably wouldn't have wwe is probably thinking saudi arabia crowd a, a much lesser chance of just booing hogan out of the arena uh, so that's what it seems like the whole the motive was with that i don't hogan would probably come back say he'll probably host wrestlemania which would be, uh, you know, in New Jersey, which is a tough crowd. So I don't. <laughs> they may boo Hogan, but uh, Saudi Arabia wasn't going to be wasn't going to boo Hogan. So it made perfect sense to bring him back uh, to you know to that crowd. So all right, do I feel the Universal title is curse? Uh, Gabriel's asking. <laughs> uh, no, I wouldn't say curse. Uh, it helped Kevin Owens. Uh, you know, get over the whole him and Jericho thing. It worked. I think putting on Goldberg was a great idea. That was fun. Brandon's asking what I think of Elias's face turn. I, you know, he did a good job on Raw. He did a very good job on Raw. Not getting too, um, too baby facey, too cheesy. You know, I'm I'm glad that he didn't do that. I'm glad that he stayed Elias. But just allow the fans to cheer him without having that, you know, that one moment where he just makes everybody boo. Now, WWE needs better heels. <laughs> they need better heels. So um Elias was the perfect person for that. 
However, you know, it I would prefer him as a heel, honestly, but he's not doing he's not doing a bad job being a baby face because he's still staying Elias, and which I which I appreciate. All right, uh, let's do another ask quest question before we dive into uh Raw and SmackDown. Uh real quick, Chris Jericho, uh, I watched the, his match uh, against um Evil at Power Struggle. Interesting. Uh so we'll we'll see him and Naito at Wrestle Kingdom. Wrestle Kingdom, I, I love watching Wrestle Kingdom every year. It's it's one of my favorite pay-per-views to watch. Um Yeah. So that's um uh, that's unfortunate. So all right. Um that that's unfortunate that uh uh Jericho <laughs> let's say it this way. Uh Jericho is, you know, you all know one of my favorites. Definitely one of my favorites. Um but <laughs> I, I wish that they would give <sighs> I don't know how I'm gonna say this. Um, I, I'll I'll say this. Um, Jericho is one of my favorites, and we all know that. But the whole Clockwork Orange type of thing, <laughs> I'm not a, I'm not a good, I'm not a big fan of that. Honestly, I'm not a, not a big fan. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not a big fan. So, um, all right, so. But at the same time, I think that Jericho having the Intercontinental Championship really helps it. Uh, you know, the fact that he hasn't defended it in five months, <laughs> you know, that's uh, people wouldn't like that. But New Japan has so many titles that Jericho actually helped. Uh, Jericho actually helped by winning it and having that big prestige. Because at the end of the day, he's just going to make. Um, He's just going to make uh, uh, Naito look even like a bigger star. So there you go. Uh, all right. Uh, other wrestling sites have continued to report on unnamed talent. Minute and Upper Midcard expressing frustration with the direction of creative and WWE. Do you foresee a mass exit coming? See, I think that's where the issue is, Lexi. I think that the issue is the fact that WWE probably won't be letting uh, a handful of people go because the independent scene is so booming now, you know? So, you know, the, the, the spring cleaning that they did every year and you just kind of have to find your way, you know, when you leave WWE and, and, and kind of, you know, get money in the Indies, it's not like that anymore. You've got viable options now. I mean, you have viable options. You have, um, Ring of Honor, you know, Lucha Underground's taped, you know, months, <laughs> months ahead. Um, so you know, but still, you know, if ongoing seasons of Lucha Underground, you have like, for instance, Jack Swagger was a part of Lucha Underground. Um, you have Impact Wrestling, of course, which is in their twelfth life of out of nine lives. <laughs> <laughs> and uh I like the product overall. I think that they're I think it's a solid product. So you have, I mean, even with you know, like a PWG or uh, uh um P, uh, PCW, you know, um there's some really viable options. New Japan, of course, you know, New Japan uh, New Japan's a very viable option. So it's not as easy it, WWE letting people go isn't the same as it were it used to, what it used to be so they could be keeping people because of that so all right so what are your grades of um what's your grades of raw and smackdown together we'll just do raw and smackdown all together gabriel's asking uh, how do you think the bullet club will fare without the guys of the elite no longer in the faction do they bring in a big name to join or go with the guys in new japan Good question. That's a really good question, actually. Um, let 
Yeah, because Cody announced that he's not with them anymore. Um, Bucks, you know, I was at I was at Ring of Honor. The Bucks don't sport. Uh, I mean, you still have the skulls. Like Marty Skrull still have like the he has like a villain club thing. Um, and then you know, Bucks have the elite on their shorts, and they still sport the the skulls and the bullets, but. Uh, as far as the the Bucks did, not not Skrull. He had like uh, skeleton hands, like cross skeleton hands with uh, like a half face skull with the with his signature uh, shades. That's kind of like his logo now. Uh, <laughs> peanut butter and jelly, uh, both on a sandwich. <laughs> That's a great ask, Chris. Question. <laughs> Kudos to Malty for that. Uh, both on a sandwich. I love me some peanut butter and jelly sandwich, ladies and gentlemen. So, <laughs> um, yeah. So as far as like a big name they could bring, um, that's a good question. Who would be, Ooh, I tell you who would be a good leader for bullet club was well, looks like they're already doing Jay white though. Looks like they're doing the Jay white thing with the OGs. I don't like the split. I don't like the OGs and the, you know, the elite, I guess you can say, although the elite is kind of like null and void now. So bullet club OGs is the group. I wouldn't, I don't, I'm not a big fan of Jay white leading that group. I tell you who would be a really good bullet club leader, Neville or Pac, you know, I think Pac would be, a great leader for Bullet Club. That would be my number one choice to lead Bullet Club would be Pac. Um, so, yeah. Uh, I see Raw, C minus, SmackDown B, C, uh, C plus for both. Um, yeah, Raw was okay to me. It was just okay, honestly. Um, it was, you know, it's hard for me. It, uh, SmackDown was a, I, I give SmackDown a solid B. <clears throat> it was a pretty solid show. Uh, other than the uh, almost and Mysterio just random match that should have taken more time. Um, Lynch's promo was good. Usos and New Day. Oh, I 100%. I love that feud. You know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm uh, <laughs> I'm partial to the new day, so because uh, I wish I wish uh, they would have won, but because it seemed like the Usos have gotten their number uh, for a while, but it was a great match. Um, but yeah, solid show, be a solid B for SmackDown. Just uh, you know, top to bottom, pretty good, pretty good show. Raw. C minus, uh, the Nia. Okay. Nia Jack's heel turn. It, it was, you could, you foreshadowed the heel turn. I think it was pretty evident, but here's the problem. Um, who cares? The, the, okay. So let me say this. I do like the fact that they're finally doing something with Tamina. I mean, but she's kind of like the, you know, the dark side of Nia Jax. Nia, <laughs> that was probably the worst raw heel turn I've ever seen in my life. They, you know, they, they're building this turn by Tamita coming out on consecutive weeks, staring down Nia Jax. And then... um they do a stare down when Ember Moon, which I don't like the fact that they're doing that to Ember Moon. That another NXT talent they're poorly utilizing. Um, Ember Moon should win the women's Royal Rumble match. That's I hope that they do that. But they do a stare down, and Tamita gets Ember Moon in a Boston Crab. Uh, well, actually, they do a stare down, and Nia, Nia Jax is like. What are you doing? What are you doing? All of a sudden, turn her around. And then you do a really weak looking elbow drops, and then you're 
and then she gets like super happy. That was a terrible heel turn. That that brought it down a notch a few times to me. LP winning the tag team titles makes sense. I mean, they're probably the only legitimate tag one of the one of the only or probably the only legitimate tag team in on Raw right now. I wish I wish they would have put some more reps in them, um, beating some more talent. But you know, out of anybody, it makes sense. Apollo Crews getting a win, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, as much as I'm an apologist for Apollo Crews, um, he won, and I and I kind of marked out on that, so I was really happy. Rousey's promo was legit, man. Rousey, she's learning, man. She's learning. I, I I appreciate that. I respect that. Rousey's learning, man. And I, I, I like it. I do like it. So all right. Um let's jump into the flavor of the week. Before we do that, I want to address a couple more ask quiz questions. <laughs> you know, Gress says uh why do video games have better stories lines than the real product? <laughs> Because they put more time into it. <laughs> um, what do y'all think about Pac being a, a the new newest member of the the Bullet Club, the newest Bullet Club leader? If he fits the mode, very defiant, great worker. Uh, you had that with Balor. You had that with uh, with with AJ. You had that with Omega. I think he fits the mode of of being the new leader of the of Bullet Club. I think. That would be very interesting. Um, there was another X quiz question on here that was interesting. Uh, oh, yeah. Peanut butter, jelly, and a donut. I don't think I've ever had that. I don't think I've ever had that. That would be interesting. That would be interesting to taste. It, it, it sounds like it's delicious. It sounds like there's a, a ton of uh, risk. <laughs> Oh yeah, the yeah. I'm glad you brought that up, GHP. That the the the, the Natalia thing. Now, I'm happy. I'm happy that they did that. That they kind of build that storyline for that to to kind of put to kind of protect Natalia and Becky and Sasha because it was kind of like a no contest or a double count out. And then to make Riot look like a bigger heel, I'm totally fine with that too. So I was in support of all that. The whole thing was good it was good but i think that natalia did a very very poor job acting honestly um i think it could have been much better honestly so <laughs> um all right so let's get into some trivia so here's here's the thing uh Gress is saying the bullet club needs to end i don't know I don't know. No, you don't. You don't end the Bullet Club. No, you can't do that. I wouldn't. I wouldn't end the Bullet Club. That's one of New Japan's, you know, bread and butters. Keep it. Um, but yeah, kudos. To, you know, kudos to putting Ruby Riot over as a heel. I think the the tearing of the. I think all that was great. It just seems like. You know, the, and just to kind of like the the the, the saliva just kind of staying there. It, my wife's an actor, uh, an actress, and she was watching it. She's like a very casual fan, and she um, she just watches it because I do. <laughs> she doesn't really get into it much, although she knows a lot of characters, but she doesn't really get into it much. She she was she managed she was watching it during that segment and. Uh, she was like, "Man, that's uh, that's not very good acting." Like we, we were kind of talk about that. We were we both were kind of talking about that. She's a much more experienced actor than than I am. I've been in some plays and stuff, but uh, she has good experience. And uh, we both kind of looked at each other. Was like, uh, "You could have you could have sold that a lot better than Natalia did." Now. Uh, and plus, there's some real feelings that you know. There's some real emotions that she can dig into to really cry for real. Like uh, you know, what I mean. So I think that could have been better. But yeah, you know, um, I would. I wish that Natalia would have sold 
that better, honestly. All right, let's ask some trivia questions before we jump into this fight of the week. Here we go. So, uh, okay, so let me clarify this from last week. I, I, I well, the tell of the show, I asked this last week, uh, and I put, and I, uh, unfortunately, 2012, I put, I don't know why I put that. What was the main event of Survivor Series 2011? So, yeah. Zed says uh, he, he thought Natalia did well. He missed the lip trip. Yeah, that's that's that what got me. It wasn't like there. You can give me real tears. I mean, like seriously, Natalia, your 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 father like legit passed away this year. Like that's you can that's that's a real place where you can dig and get some, give me some real tears. Um. You know, like if you're gonna if you're gonna give the WWE your blessing to 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 allow your dad to be a part of a storyline, do it. You know what I mean? Do it. Uh, make it like like go all out. Dig into some 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 places where you get some real real tears out of. Um, it'll make the crowd more into it too. Um, um did you see that pot cutter from the apron into the ring? I don't know. I, I heard about it. Uh, send that to me on Twitter. Send me that. Send me. Send me that on Twitter. If there's like a something on, like a tweet or somebody catching it or something like that, send that to me. I would like to see that. Yeah. So that was the. So that was the Rock and Cena versus Awesome Truth. <laughs> that was uh, that. The yeah. So um, that's the discrepancy that I'm clearing up now. Next trivia question. This is all Survivor Series, by the way. What Survivor Series did the Shield debut? What Survivor Series did the Shield debut? What you got on that? What Survivor Series did the Shield debut? All right, ladies. Oh yeah, Brandon. Let me let me address this real quick. Uh, <laughs> Did you laugh seeing Shawn Michaels wrestling with bald head looked so strange? It was so strange seeing uh, Michaels wrestling bald. I just, to me, it just kills a lot of his gimmick um, because he's a smaller guy and a bald head, smaller guy. Yeah, not really. 2012. 2012. There you go. Next, who defeated The Undertaker, The Undertaker, in a first blood match at Survivor Series 2006? Who defeated The Undertaker in the first blood match uh, at Survivor Series 2006? Um, all right, so let's get into the flavor of the week, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, let's dig right into it. Here we go. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, good job, Brandon. Canada. Canada. All right, so here's the bracket. We're going to do the first round of this because this is what I came up with. So there's a lot of play-in matches or play-in uh, uh, contest uh, matchups. Uh, I had 16 and then I just made a bunch of them play-ins, like Mysterio versus Miz, Corbin versus Strowman, Dream versus Joe, Usos versus New Day, Sullivan versus Black, Orton versus Ziggler, Carmella versus Naomi, a triple threat right here, Lentz versus Flair versus Asuka right here, Rollins, McIntyre, Rude, and then Dillinger versus Owens, Styles, Nakamura, and Balor. All right, so... um. Let's do the first round matches first. Let's start off with um, Styles versus uh, the. Um, okay, so let's do the play in first, which is Mysterio versus Miz. So who wins there, Mysterio or Miz? Start with Mysterio versus Miz to advance to the actual first round. Mysterio versus Miz. And as you 
write that. I'll ask you another trivia question. The Rock versus Rikishi occurred at which Survivor Series? The Rock versus Rikishi occurred at which Survivor Series? Okay, well, looks like we're uh, we have a, a a tie right now for Mysterio. Who's going to break the tie? Who's going to break the tie? Who's going to break the tie? Mysterio. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. Mysterio gets the uh, the play in. He wins the play in match. All right. Mysterio wins. Next, we have um, another play in. Uh, Lars Sullivan versus Aleister Black. Lars Sullivan versus Aleister Black. Sullivan versus Black. Um, good job, Gruss. 2000 Survivor Series. I did it for The Rock. I did it for The Rock. 2000. Good job, Gruss. All right. Uh, got tied with tied with Lars and Black too. I knew this is going to be difficult. <laughs> I am okay. Oh, still tied. The next one I see. The next one I see between Lars and oh, looks like somebody deleted there. <laughs> Lars answer. All right, there you go. Alistair Black. Sorry, GHP. I know that's your boy, but uh, looks like Alistair Black. Um, <laughs> he says, go listen to the Lars theme again. <laughs> so Alistair Black wins that one. Orton versus Ziggler. Orton versus Ziggler. What you got? Orton versus Ziggler. Orton versus Ziggler. And as you as you think about that, I'll ask you another trivia question. Who made his WWE debut at Survivor Series 1999 and who did he beat? Who made his WWE debut at Survivor Series 1999? And who did he beat? Looks like uh, looks like Orton unanimous. All right. <laughs> oh no! Someone says no. No one cares about Ziggler. Oh. Um, Baron Corbin versus Braun Strowman. Baron Corbin versus Braun Strowman. Nope. Taz did not beat Kurt Angle at Survivor Series. Taz beat Kurt Angle at the Royal Rumble. Nope. Big Show debuted in 99. I think. I think it was 99. Uh, the current Corbin thing. The current Corbin thing. Uh, Kurt did not beat Taz because Taz beat Kurt Angle in his debut. You guys are trying. <laughs> you guys are trying. What you got? Good answers, though. Good. They're not correct, but they're good answers. Um, nope. Yes, Kurt Angle debut. That is true. That is true. Who did he beat? Who did he beat? You got that part right. Now you got to remember who he beat in his debut. All right, looks like uh, Braun. It's like Braun um, gets that. Gets the nod for that. Nope, he didn't beat Al Snow. He did not beat Al Snow. 
Nope, he didn't beat Val Venus. <laughs> he did not beat Val Venus. There you go, Brandon. Sean Stasiak. Sean Stasiak. All right, more plans. Let's do the Usos versus the New Day. The Usos versus the New Day. Usos New Day. Two really good theme songs, by the way. Two really good theme songs. We got <laughs> Kurt beat meat. <laughs> Vince McChris. Yes, GHB. I love it. <laughs> um, meat. Yeah, that's funny. You got, uh, I see New Day. I see Usos. See, these were. These are some good choices. All right, New Day. New Day wins. New Day gets the play in. I agree. I love the New Day's theme song. I love the New Day period, actually. It's one of my, they're one of my favorites. Uh, another play in. Uh, triple Threat. Becky Lynch versus Becky Lynch versus Charlotte Flair versus Asuka. Lynch, Flair, Oscar, you guys see that right there? There's a triple threat playing, man. Yeah, it is hard, Zed. I agree. This is this makes it even more fun because it's difficult. Lynch, Flair, Oscar. Lynch, Flair, Oscar. Yeah, I think that was. Uh, I think where where it's leaning to right now looks like that was my that was my choice too, and I, I agree with it. Um. Yep. All right. Oscar wins. I agree. I agree. Oscar gets the nod. All right. Another play in Ty Dillinger versus Kevin Owens. Ty Dillinger. Kevin Owens, right here on the, on the bottom corner here. What do you got? Owens. Owens gets the nod, ladies and gentlemen. Owens gets the nod. These plans are pretty cool, too. All right, another plan. Uh, um, two more plans that are really good, actually. Carmella versus Naomi. Don't include the dance break for Carmella, either. <laughs> Don't include a dance break. There's another trivia questions while you guys uh, figure that out. Who did Bret Hart defeat to retain the WWE title at Survivor Series 1992? Who did uh, Bret Hart defeat to retain the WWE title at Survivor Series 1992? Oh, good job, Brandon. Shawn Michaels. Looks like we're split between Carmella and Naomi. Shawn Michaels, great job. Um, what we got? Carmella and Naomi. Next one wins. Next one gets the uh, gets to come in. Mella is money. Um, all right. Well, we got it. Mella is the deal. I think Naomi's is one of the best in the uh, in the whole. Um, yep. All right. So good, very valiant effort. Uh, yeah. Looking at those trivia questions, I realize a lot of time has passed. Yeah. Um, yeah. Naomi is one of my favorites personally, but Carmella is your choice. So, um, all right. One last play in is Velveteen Dream versus Samoa Joe. Velveteen Dream versus Samoa Joe. So this week we'll do all the play-ins. Then we'll do the first round next week. Um, Velveteen Dream and Samoa Joe. I see splits on that one too. Another trivia question as y'all do this. 
What type of match did Big Boss Man and Nails have at Survivor Series 1992? Um, looks like Dream got the edge. Velveteen Dream. D-R-E-A-M is <laughs> another one of my personal favorites. Um, all right, so those are the plans, ladies and gentlemen. Good stuff. Uh, and great. Brandon knows his trivia, ladies and gentlemen. Multi as well. Nightstick on a pole match. I was definitely scared of nails when I was a kid. I was just, I was petrified of nails. But God is good and ended up having a positive effect on me because now I'm about to become a doctor in forensic psychology. So I get to uh, interview people like that and see if they're eligible for parole. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so it all, so it all, uh, it all works out. <laughs> It all worked out at the end. Boss man. <laughs> it all worked out at the end. Last trivia question for the night. Who won the WWE championship at Survivor Series 1991? Last trivia question for the night. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. This is what we have. Styles Mysterio, Strowman Dream, Nakamura Baylor, Undisputed Era, The New Day, Black, against Orton, Carmella, and Asuka, Rollins, and McIntyre, and Rude, and Owens. That is going to be a nice, fun bracket to do next week. And you will all correct The Undertaker. Great trivia tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Great show. Lots of fun. Kudos to Garrett Bischoff, my guy. Awesome, awesome. Thanks for coming on the show tonight. Uh, next week, we also are also have a uh, I actually have the next two weeks booked for you all for. So uh, it will be uh, announced uh, closer to the show. So I have the next two weeks of live Q&A's booked for you all, because if this is something you all want, I'm going to do my best to to get it live for you. So I have the new, next two weeks booked. So uh, stay tuned and stay close to at Chris Prolific at Crave Wrestling until next week, la ladies and gentlemen. God bless you all. Enjoy your week of wrestling. And always remember, I do it for you. Have a good night. So long, everyone. God bless. Bye-bye.